Demand for gasoline is lower than it's been since 1997. Supply of gasoline is so high that the number one exported product from the United States is, guess what? The number one manufactured export. We export more of it than we do cars or computers or anything else that we manufacture. Gasoline. We are, we're, we're drowning in gasoline. And, well, of course, they're exporting as fast as they can to keep the price up. But And, and for this, uh, the Canadian corporation, TransCanada, wants the U.S. federal government to take your land using the force of guns through eminent domain to run a pipeline to extend the Keystone Pipeline. There's already a pipeline. A Keystone Pipeline already exists from Alberta to refineries in Louisiana, or excuse me, in, in uh, uh, Missouri and Indiana. But they want to extend this thing down to the Gulf Coast so that they can add to the amount of oil that we're exporting to England, China, Mexico, Brazil, all the countries that we're exporting gasoline to right now. They want to add to that and leave us with all of the cancer-causing waste products that come out of the smokestacks of these refineries. William Yateman is an energy policy analyst with the Competitive Enterprise Institute. CEI.org is the, uh, is the website. Uh, William, given all that, I don't understand how you can be an advocate of the Keystone Pipeline at all. I mean, this is a thousand mile long terrorist target right in the middle of the United States. Well, I mean, I think you'll find what I certainly am. I do support a decision for for the president to approve, to, to grant the president Why? a permit and allow it to proceed. Well, by law, that decision must be rooted in the national interest. And I guess the fact remains that... that well, that maybe that's why he's life. saying no? <laughs> well, I would beg to differ. I would, I would suggest that perhaps... Well, tell me what's in the right. national interest, having more people die from cancer in Cancer Alley, and having uh, Shell take more billions back to, uh, to Holland, and BP take more billions back to the U.K. This is, you know, going to make billions. I mean, they're, they're talking about an $8 billion investment right up front, these companies. They wouldn't do that if they weren't going to make a pile of money. Uh, shipping more money out of the United States, shipping more gasoline out of the, state, the United States, and leaving the poison here. How is that a good thing for us? <laughs> well, then, no, it certainly will create wealth. But, but I think there's three... It's going to create wealth for a small number of very, very rich people already. The Koch brothers are going to make out like bandits on this thing. <laughs> well, please allow me to finish. So, so, so very, very briefly, it's in our national interest for three reasons. One, it's the number one priority of our closest friends, our neighbors to the north, the Canadians. So we should do whatever they want. They think that we should have a national health care system. Do you agree with that? Because they're sick and tired of Americans going up there and raiding their pharmacies. I've seen, well, you know, I, I, I used to live in, in Vermont where the buses issue, would go up there every weekend with the old I people on them. I think it's the same sort of national interest priority. So, so first off, it's, it's a big priority of our closest diplomatic allies. Second off, it, it would create 2,000 shovel-ready jobs. Well, hang on just a second. Let's, let's finish dollars. this first off. Why is it, if this is so important to get, to get the Alberta tar sands oil to a, to a deep water port where it can be refined into gasoline and exported to other countries, why is it, if that's so, what's so important, why is it that British Columbia, when they tried to run the pipeline west to the west coast of Canada, said, no, you can't do it, and the, and, and the Canadian government stood behind them? Well, no, there's been actually no official word on that. Remember that the number one route refusing was to, to say them. no is the equivalent of or refusing to say yes is the equivalent of saying no. There's been they would no not authorize that pipeline. There's been no plan that they could possibly oppose yet. I mean, remember that all the chips were were in the uh, the that, basket or all the eggs were in the basket. That's because the entire so province said we don't want the pollution. The, oh, well, no, no. I mean, I'll tell you what. The Canadian government has, has committed itself to developing these tar sands oils. So if we don't get them, if the United States is not the beneficiary of these tar sands oils, then somebody else will. Now, if, if you're worried about greenhouse gases and whatnot, we're the closest closest to the source. All right, so this stuff is going to get used no matter, no matter what anyone feels. And Canadian however it's committed. used, it's going to produce the exact same amount of greenhouse gases. So I'd oh, rather have no, it be not, expensive not and to dear to somebody no, wouldn't you agree than that, easy that and nearby. Wouldn't you agree that this pipeline to America, is, that, that logistical measure is perhaps less greenhouse gas intensive than shipping it to a different country where it'll get refined? William, um, you know, it, you, it under, is, it, under, whether it is shipped as crude oil. Air laws, don't you think that that would result, I mean, all of it, ceteris paribus, don't you think that will result in a net increase in GDP? I mean, that's certainly the Washington Post does. Um, William, so I, let, let, me, let me just explain basic chemistry to you. The, if there is a certain amount of carbon, you know, carbon molecules in the, in the complex hydrocarbons in, the, in, the, in, these, in these long carbon chains that make up oil molecules, when those are burned or when those are refined uh, and ultimately make their way into the atmosphere, 
that there's a, a fixed amount of carbon there. It's ultimately, whether and through the refinery process and through the ultimately using it process, it's going to get into the atmosphere. I'm so totally I'm in favor of that. saying of saying if somebody wants to use this stuff, let it be really expensive so it's less likely it'll be used. And not only that, you're saying that shipping the raw oil to, to China would be a bad thing. Why, why is it not a bad thing that we're going to ship this stuff down to Louisiana and Texas and refine it, and then ship the gasoline, the refined oil out. What's the difference? Uh, now, two things. One, we're going to pipeline it. We're not going to put it on a barge and send it across an ocean. It is so, going to be so sent. It right. is the is the, the, the refined product. That burned? No, no, let, let, me, no, I let you talk. Let me just make this one point. Now, there's a finite amount of carbon, yes, in the tar sands oil. But you would be using oil from Saudi Arabia, oil from America, uh, oil from my point to transport it my to point. China. So Number let's force two, somebody to Chinese, if somebody talk about the emissions. Now, if the Chinese operate under less stringent air quality laws than we do, won't that result in the in the emission of more non-GHG cancer causing actual pollutants like nitrogen oxides? And like sulfur dioxide. So sure will, but I, I do things, not want those a things. Net positive in GHGs and a net positive in cancer causing pollutants. So for I think it's the opposite of what you said. Well, if if anybody is going to be producing carcinogenic poisons to produce gasoline for the Chinese, I'd rather it wasn't us. <laughs> and well, and and if we're going to be shipping gasoline to China, that you think that that ship works on solar power to get that gasoline over there? No, 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 I don't. And, well, well it's, first off, as I was noting, number one, diplomatic priority of our friends in the north. Number two, two thousand shovel-ready jobs. Number three, ex two thousand jobs. That, that, we're that willing to put. A, wait a minute. We're willing to put a terrorist, a thousand-mile-long terrorist bullseye right through the middle of our country, right over one of some of our most important aquifers, in exchange for two thousand jobs. Tom, Are you serious? Argument, should we never build bridges? Should we never build highways? Should we never build any logistics that could be a terrorist target? I mean, that's just not convincing. You build a that's bridge totally... in the United States, you're gonna, it's going to produce a lot of benefit to the local community. This is going to produce no benefit to any community. Thing. Jobs, wealth creation, employment, salaries, livelihoods, these are good things. 2,000 shovel-ready jobs that don't require a government dime. Now, a lot of people consider that in the national interest. I, I respectfully disagree if you don't, but, um, you know, the, the, the nature of the beast, the fact of the matter is, that is the national interest. Why, do we, why, do we just, why don't we just jobs? hire people to shoot people? I mean, instead of letting them die from cancer, I'll bet, you know, you could get a whole bunch of ex-Blackwater uh, ex, uh, guys or whatever, you know, who are suffering, oh, uh, you know, who are, who are, who are a little psychotic and really, really like shooting folks up. People. And, well, you'd be that making jobs. I won't. Well, I mean, you could you could hire two thousand people. Well, so, so do you support green jobs? Do you support these jobs where we're spending billions of dollars to create, you know, fifteen odd permanent? Jobs That's not the question. Wind turbine. The question. Solar? The no, question is whether two thousand jobs you said to, for a project that's, that is killing people. That is a, yeah, that, that, it is I mean, killing you're people. That's more sensical than what I just said. The, it is killing people. That, well, I, I okay. So your third. We have one minute left. Your your third point. Well, my third point you haven't convinced is, me you know, the first what's wrong with export jobs? I mean, aren't we for manufacturing jobs in this country? Aren't we for more exports? So, yes, if we're taking raw materials from Canada and then adding value to them and creating these refined petroleum products, and, and the main source of demand for these is Latin America, not China, then what's the matter with creating a job boom in the export it's a dirty of industry. a manufactured product? That sounds because great it, because, to me. because it's a dirty industry. We're becoming the dirt pit of the world right now. <laughs> Oh, and we are the extraction capital. We're the cleanest laws in the world. We're the cleanest country in the world. I William, mean, things are actually quite well here, though, the, with the exception of this terrible economy. But this and, one goes and Cancer ways, Alley, uh, improving that situation. And Cancer Alley, all, all you know, look at look at the cancer rates downwind from the refineries where you want to pump this stuff to, and they, and those numbers will go up, and you know this. I well, I can't say that I do know. This I'm is not an industry that I want here. I you know I don't see cancer. You know I I grew up in Michigan. I never saw cancer downwind from a GM plant. But you can see cancer massively downwind from these refineries. Anyhow, William Yateman, CEI.org is the website. You can read his argument. Um, very well done over there. William, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for having me.